Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. My favorite characters in Friendship is Magic are Cadence and Flurryheart. Cadence because she's very supportive of the other characters and generally just has no downsides, and Flurryheart because she's such an adorable little babu. Which is why it pains me to see complete and total fucking morons pretend as if Flurryheart is some kind of terrible character. I mean, she's the opposite of a terrible character. She literally just a babu. She didn't do anything, or at least she didn't do anything that was directly her fault. You're wrong about Flurry Heart, and this is why. I don't get bronies. I really don't. They'll see a character who commits terrible atrocities and never improves and go, Wow, such a good and relatable character. Or someone who shows up for all of two seconds and go, Wow, amazing, best princess ever. But then a literal babu shows up, and all she wants to do is make you smile at how cute she is, and suddenly it's like, Oh, is this all you can offer? Ugh, no nuance at all. <laughs> <laughs> None of this makes any goddamn sense, but then again, I guess you can't really project all your insecurities and what you imagine your personality to be like onto a baby, can you? So yeah, the same antisocial malcontents who think Newbie Dash is an important lesson and that world building is the single most important element of storytelling also think a flurry of emotions, literally the most wholesome and pure episode to ever appear on the damn show, is some kind of failure. Whatever, I'm not here to psychoanalyze bronies, I'm here to tell you why they're wrong and should be punched. A flurry of emotions is a fucking dartboard of bad faith brony whining about friendship is magic. Everything from Cadence and Shining Armor supposedly getting shafted to Flurry Heart being annoying to some people complaining about Spearhead. Spearhead is like the best character! He's so bro and just into everything and just so weirdly artistic and just- I love Spearhead and I want more of him. I won't touch on the whole Cadence and Shining Armor got shafted by the story and her bad characters argument again because as I said in my video about Princess Cadence, most of these assholes said that the perfect pair was an amazing episode so it's clear and obvious that they're being very selective in their criticism. If you think the perfect pair is amazing yet think Cadence and Shining Armor are problematic then you're just a picky asshole for the sake of being a picky asshole. The fact is that A Flurry of Emotions is an episode about Twilight, not Cadence and Shining Armor, and as the series protagonist, it makes sense that Twilight would be the forerunner, quibbling because the episode wasn't about the characters you wanted it to be about in the very particular way you wanted it to be made is just ridiculous. It reminds me of when they used to bay at the moon about, when are we gonna get a Celestia episode? And failing to realize that maybe we shouldn't have a Celestia episode because that's not the role she was written for. Flurry Hardy isn't even a major character, she's a plot device, which is why nonsense like this is especially troubling. Does anyone else besides me get the sinking feeling that Flurry Heart could get away with murder? Because there's this weird thing going on in the show with babies and intelligence. No one should yell at a real life baby for many reasons, one of them being their lack of cognition. But Flurry is clearly smart enough to understand things like right and wrong, and understand speech no less. So when it comes to potentially disciplining someone like her, it's a weird gray area. Why is it? When something happens, it is always you three? Believe me, Professor, I've been asking myself the same question for six years. Am I the only one who finds it weird that people will argue that not enough discipline is perfectly fine when an adult pulls some nasty bullshit, but when a literal infant does it, suddenly it becomes a problem? Now, first of all, people shouldn't be complaining that Flurry Heart is too smart and aware for a baby because this has been a consistent writing theme of children in cartoons for a very long time and for a very good reason. If we want to talk about babies who are smarter than they're supposed to be with not enough parenting, Rugrats is pushing dangerously close to at least one person asking why the hell social services hasn't been called on Stu decades prior to Friendship is Magic. Hell, babies. Sinclair was fully verbal the moment he hatched, and a lot of his own acting out was played up as deliberate. Wanna give daddy a kiss? Not the mama, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama, not the mama! Dad! It's starting to bother me. Generally, young children are written to be more aware and communicative in cartoons because cartoons generally don't abide passive characters, especially in episodes that center entirely around them. Flurry Heart being the center of an episode means that she has to actually interact with the people around her, and that requires her showing more intelligence than you'd expect from the real world. But just because that boundary is pushed doesn't mean that basic rules of human decency no longer apply. The fact is that it's really difficult to discipline small children because discipline doesn't work without a full grasp of what you've done wrong. I've gone on record saying that Twilight yelling at Flurry Heart was the right decision, and that apologizing for doing so was also the right decision. Flurry had transitioned to behavior that had a high risk of getting someone seriously hurt, and all previous attempts at talking her down hadn't worked, so scaring her was the only option to keep her from hurting someone. But that having been said, this wasn't discipline. 
This was intervention. It wouldn't be effective discipline because Flurry isn't really capable of understanding what she'd done wrong. It needed to be stopped in the moment, but as Twilight quickly realized, continuing to yell at Flurry wasn't going to work. A lot of her earlier behavior isn't even really her fault. Twilight's the one who can't keep an eye on her, and it seems Twilight recognizes this as she often cleans up Flurry's messes and even came to the same conclusion at the end of the episode, that Flurry's increasingly bad behavior was directly the result of Twilight's continuing neglect. That she should never have agreed to watch her with such a full schedule, but she was so determined to be the best aunt ever that she ignored her own responsibilities to do it. Showing slightly more intelligence and self-awareness than a typical real-life one-year-old isn't the writing issue that these people think it is, and this is what really seems to grind people's brains to a halt. Let me let you in on a little secret, alright? You ready? Here goes. My Little Pony is not realistic! In My Little Pony, critical mental health issues can be talked away in a few seconds, terrorists will give up everything just for the chance of having friends, a teenager can be considered more evil than a fascist, and literal fucking magic is all over the place. Yet for some reason, a lot of so-called critics will spend all their time hyper-examining the realism and science of the show. Hell, despite falling into this trap, fire brand name Dish Soap has been known to both make fun of and indulge in this very stupidity. Okay, the science of the episode can be a little distracting, but come on, it's a cartoon about flying magical ponies. We can give it some leeway. Uh, no you asshole. Not some leeway. A lot of leeway. There are pegasi and unicorns. Deities are real and also interventionist. Science ain't anywhere near this show, and scientific inaccuracies aren't actually going to be distracting at all unless you've got a bug up your ass about it in general. But that's not a show problem, that's a you problem. Get over yourself. This is something that Mr. Burn Marks here is himself guilty of. When the Times There a Changeling came out, his entire analysis of the episode amounted to trying to use college level math to figure out how the Changelings process love and where it all came from. Funnily enough, despite going through an unnecessary amount of effort to do this, he came to the conclusion that it doesn't work because there's no active source of energy for them to initially feed off of, and just forgetting that equestrians are themselves massive beacons of love every hour of every day, and that the changelings can easily generate their own love to feed on because expressing love and feeding on love are two different things, and love is not a finite resource. He still missed a massive element in his own stupid math theory because he's missing the key important element to analyzing any work of fiction. Your fucking imagination. Remember that? We call it the willing suspension of disbelief nowadays because imagination doesn't sound as good on a think piece, but it is kind of important. This is why a lot of the critical analysis of MLP is so dry and strange. People examine the story in raw mechanical elements completely divorced from their own imagination and end up quibbling over minor details. This is one of the reasons I look at the more broad themes of the shows I examine because it takes that stretching of reality into account, and I generally only get on the show's case for not adhering to realism when the absence of reality has become harmful. Friendship is Magic should not be taking this approach with really serious topics like suicide and depression. Their redemption arcs are hasty and bad, even with taking the fact that it's not realistic into account. Remember what I said last episode about how Steven Universe goes way too far for an abusive parents metaphor? Yes, yeah, same basic principle. This is where we circle back to a flurry of emotions because the episode is ultimately about Twilight learning that she can't just have Flurry with her and call that a good day because Flurry needs love and attention from Twilight and she is repeatedly not getting it from her. She's bored, sad, neglected, and so she acts out like a child of any age would do. Flurry is more intelligent than any other baby specifically because they're an audience that needs to be entertained, and having only one active character in an episode simply doesn't work. So Flurry is an infant with the expressiveness and activity of a toddler and the mental awareness of a five-year-old. She needs to be all those things to communicate how she's feeling to the audience. This is the only reason she behaves like this. What's even worse is that this attitude that because Flurry is smarter than an infant it means that disciplining her becomes this gray area is a massive red flag. Because even if Flurry was five or six or seven, discipline wouldn't actually be the solution. Disciplining Flurry Flurry for something that isn't her fault simply isn't going to change anything. It's simply not fair to expect a young child to sit patiently for hours with no attention paid to them while you go about your day. Any parent who has ever had to take their kids out running errands even once should know this. People have limits to their patience. Everyone does, and children have very low limits to their patience and very few ways of actually communicating with it, especially if their parents haven't taught it to them. So when they get bored and neglected while their caregiver drags them around all over Hell's Half Acre for the entire day, they start to get cranky. Hell, I'm a grown-ass woman, and if I had to wait around while my mother dawdled around town and struck up conversations with everyone she even slightly remembers, I'd be hauling her off by the ear within a half hour. And if you knowingly put your children in a situation where you know they're going to be bored, frustrated, and 
angry with few, if any, ways to alleviate that and then punish them for expressing it when you were the cause of it, you are an abusive parent, plain and fucking simple. And before you yeah butt me about how your parents did that to you, your parents abused you. Go get therapy and work through it. It's ultimately Twilight's fault that Flurry ends up behaving like this because what Twilight put her through simply wasn't fair or responsible. This is quite literally the main central theme of the episode that they literally stated outright. Flurry, I'm so sorry. I've been a terrible aunt today. All you wanted to do was play, and I've barely been able to pay attention to you. None of this is your fault. It's mine. So much for being the best aunt ever. But I hope you know how much I love you. And yet... The focus by the community is on whether or not one can adequately discipline Flurry for Twilight's massive error in judgment. This isn't unique to idiot bronies, this is a trait shared by all bad parents and adult children of bad parents, where discipline and making sure children are quiet and obedient to Satan authoritarian ego are more important than their actual psychological development. Twilight wasn't taking adequate care of Flurry in this episode, and treating that like a discipline problem is not just blatantly wrong, it paints a very worrying picture of the one who made the argument in the first place. She's sweet little babo. She don't deserve this bullshit. She just wants to play with her auntie Twiley and hug her damn snail. Give her a break. She's too young for this shit. You know, you might roll your eyes and claim I'm being melodramatic, but it's very disturbing that this kind of take on a flurry of emotions even exists. I worry for any children these people might have, because that is not the headspace with which to raise a child with any degree of success. That's the attitude my parents took to raising me, that you'll follow and adhere to all of my whims without complaint, regardless of how unfair they are, and I'll punish you for daring to do otherwise, and I'm still in therapy for the damage that caused. And that attitude is especially gross when there are actual grown adult characters who should be given real tangible punishments for their despicable actions, and so many of those same people look the other way and make excuses about it. There are no two ways about it. You guys are fucking disturbing. Get help.